Manchester United's 2024-25 Europa League campaign has begun with a whimper with the Red Devils held to a 1-1 home draw. Old Trafford is the theatre of dreams and 20 were looking forward to playing there against Manchester United. It is at this point where United should be hitting them with a harsh reality check and turning the dream into a nightmare like with Barnsley last week. Instead it was 20 who ended the night celebrating, toasting a 1-1 draw that was clearly a better result for them than it was for Eric Ten Hag's Manchester United. Christian Eriksen scored United's goal before Sam Lammers equalized in the second half. Let's take a look at where it did not go right. Here's a look at three errors Eric Ten Hag made on Wednesday night. Christian Eriksen substitution reactive, not proactive. Christian Eriksen was Manchester United's key player in the first half, scoring the opening goal. It was his third of the season. One of the issues for the Dane is that when the game gets stretched and more physically intense, he can get overrun. And we saw that when he lost his composure amid a defensive mix-up for Twent's goal. Eriksen was substituted eight minutes later. This was a case of Eric Ten Hag being reactive rather than proactive. The alternative option was that Ten Hag should have taken Eriksen off earlier and bring in Karsemiro or Kavi Mainu for a fresh pair of legs on 60 minutes. With this being Eriksen's fourth consecutive start, the plan should always have been to take him off before it backfired. Or alternatively, Fernandez could have come off and Eriksen pushed further forward. Two, Bruno Fernandez kept on for all 90 minutes. There is a growing sentiment among Manchester United fans that Bruno Fernandes is treated a little differently under Eric Ten Hag at the moment to other players. Fernandes is out of form, failing to score a single goal for United all season, often missing clear-cut chances. In the 20 draw, his creative side was found wanting. He completed just 75% of his passes, 39 out of 52, and created only one chance. His one shot at goal was a weak effort from a set piece and stoppage time United's last chance wasted. Just like against Palace at the weekend, even when off the boil, Fernandez is the one player Ten Hag won't change, and it is to the detriment of the team. Lastly, Xerxes and Hoyland must play together when chasing. Fernandez staying on met Joshua Xerxes came off when Rasmus Hoyland came on, just like at Selhurst Park, and it did not really work. Xerxes showed some excellent touches during the game and was threatening. He just needed a little help. Hoyland could not really get into the game and is still getting up to speed after his injury. The frustration is that United's two big money forwards are yet to share the pitch together. It should not be a case of either or where when the team is chasing a goal. Xerxy is a player who could have dropped back into the Fernandez role to support and help Hoyland. This could have been a match-winning combination. Hoyland and Xerxy are very contrasting styles and with the game getting frenetic, the Dane coming off the bench makes United more predictable, rather than less. Get them on the pitch together, and defenses will really have something difficult to consider. And with Fernandez not playing well, this was an easy decision the manager overlooked. One month into the season and there is sufficient reason to worry at Manchester United. Will it ever work out for Eric Ten Hag? Ahead of the season, Eric Ten Hag talked a good game, focusing back to his record of winning two trophies in two years. The first Manchester United manager since Sir Alex Ferguson to lift silverware in successive campaigns. Ten Hag needed a good start to the season to help supporters forget the reality of last season's crushing eighth place finish which some feared would cost him his job ahead of the FA Cup final. Now, one month into the season, there are some tangible reasons to be impressed with performances on the pitch. United are conceding far less shots than last season, and there are some impressive individual displays too. The results, on the other hand, are another matter. So far, it has simply not been good enough. I felt after the FA Cup final, the timing would have been wrong to get rid of Eric Ten Hag not because of the emotion of the win, but that he deserved the chance to work under a proper, cohesive football structure being put together by Ineos. I did not feel the appetite to change it another manager without seeing if there could be some improvement and throw out 2023-24 as a freak year due to injuries for a manager who finished in third in 2022-23. One month into this campaign, it is looking like Ten Hag finishing third in 2022-23 is more of the aberration than last year's finish. The current Premier League table has Manchester United in 11th place with a goal difference of zero and only two wins from five matches. The Europa League draw with FC20 was another depressingly poor result, and Ten Hag is experiencing real struggles in European competition. Dating back to the 2-2 home draw with Sevilla, 
Manchester United have won just one of the last nine European games. It is simply not good enough, and it is hard to feel confident this won't become one in ten when United face Porto away next week. Gary Neville is on record saying he expects Ten Hag will get until at least December before making a decision on his future. But the month of October makes for an uncomfortable fixture list. The final match of this month is at home to Tottenham. Eric Ten Hag and Manchester United need a win. But we should remember how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's 3-0 away win over Tottenham in October 2021 only served to buy him time. He was fired a month later after results failed to improve. October is not set up kindly for Ten Hag United to travel to Porto and then face Aston Villa in the Premier League away from home days later. Then after the international break, United host Brentford with potential replacement Thomas Frank possibly coming to Old Trafford with a point to prove. Then come back to back away games against Jose Mourinho's Fenerbahce and a tight turnaround to face West Ham away on the Sunday. That is going to be an extremely difficult week. You can no longer look at matches and think United are going to go on a run of wins. If that was going to happen, it would have done so this past month. We are probably looking at a similar output to this past month. A couple of draws, a win, a couple of losses. And that will leave United outside the top 10 in the Premier League and struggling in the Europa League group. A win against Tottenham is an if, and should United win, it won't be enough if followed by a loss against Porto or Villa. United needs sustained wins, consistency. That is what Ten Hag has been tasked with by Dan Ashworth. I want Eric Ten Hag to succeed as Manchester United manager, but based on what we have seen this season alone, I'm not sure he can. Now into his third season in charge, it should be better than this. Just three wins in all competitions all season, another slow start. It feels like we're treading a familiar path. Supporters are growing restless with United's lack of ruthlessness and some poor tactical substitution choices. It could get worse. I don't know if we'll get better. As United enters a crucial period with tough fixtures ahead, it's time for the team to step up, find consistency, and deliver the results needed to get back on track. The road to success is still open, but it requires sharpness, better decision-making, and a winning mindset. Now it's time to rally behind the team. Let's support them in their upcoming games and hope they can turn things around.